Bitcoin, ETF, Securities and Exchange Commission, aka the SEC. All of these buzzwords are dominating the crypto news narrative right now. A big decision on the first ETF application update from Kathy Wood's ARK Investments is coming down this week. And consequently, we could see huge fireworks in the market or maybe not. Uh, the truth is that no one knows. We do remain bullish, but here's a question. Why do all the big players want Bitcoin to begin with? Why is there almost no talk of, for example, an Ethereum ETF? And why is there zero talk about a Cardano, Solana, Polygon, Cosmos, etc. ETF? It's actually pretty simple. And in this video, I'll provide you with a definitive answer as to why. Welcome to the channel. My name is Maddie, and this is Altcoin Buzz. All the very best of luck if you choose to invest. As usual, just remember that I am not an official financial or investment advisor. And by extension, therefore, this video is not official financial or investment advice. Imagine centralized exchange trading access and liquidity, but with no KYC. You can get the volume and the pricing you need without any KYC requirements using BideFi. It's true. You can trade over 400 trading pairs in the spot market or 150 pairs in the perps market, and you can withdraw 0.5 BTC daily. Plus, fees are super low. We're talking 0.6% for futures and perp trades. Slippage is basically non-existent, and you can trade with up to 200 times leverage or set and forget with the auto invest. And again, all with no KYC. You're also gonna get up to $8,698 in bonuses for trying BideFi, along with a free month of our money-making altcoin buzz alpha service just for giving BideFi a try. You can check out this deal by clicking the link in the description of this video and the pinned comment below. Okay, let's first of all consider Bitcoin in the context of BTC versus other crypto projects. First of all, Bitcoin is the soundest money in the world right now, full stop. It has a fixed supply that is hard-coded into the system mathematically. To change that in any capacity is a huge undertaking, if not downright impossible. And this is why people with different ideas of what Bitcoin should be don't change, in fact, cannot change it themselves. They hard fork it and they make their own changes with a new project. And some of those forks, like Litecoin, for example, can differentiate themselves and even work alongside Bitcoin. Their missions are going to be very different, but others like BCH or BSV, to be candid, are in fact failing in comparison to Bitcoin's performance. If you're an Ethereum fan and an ETH holder and user of it and EVM, and you believe in that ultrasound money meme, then you're believing in nonsense, I hate to tell you. We talk about many proof of stake networks on this channel on Altcoin Buzz, and the truth is that we like many of them. Some are in the control of very few, while others are more decentralized. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is this. Many projects, including the proof of stake version of Ethereum, run exactly like fiat banking and finance, which is the very system that early crypto pioneers sought to challenge in the first place. And maybe you don't believe me, but I'll remind you of the golden rule, not the biblical golden rule, but the actual practical golden rule, which is that he who has the gold makes the rules very simply. And that's the fiat system with banks, other institutions as well, and governments, which are all collectively with a fair dose of cronyism making the rules. And if you are in a proof of stake network with a high concentration of a few validators, then you have a fiat-like system going on. And Ethereum has such a high concentration. It's true. We love Ethereum, but that's the reality. Ethereum currently has just short of 900,000 validators. That's according to our friends at Staking Rewards. But hold on a second, Maddie. That sounds like a big number, and therefore it sounds pretty decentralized, right? Not really, no. Lido alone, as you can see here, has 288,000 validators. That is thanks to its liquid staking program. And other big liquid stakers like Coinbase, Rocket Pool, and Binance add another almost 200,000 validators. So now, almost 50% of the validators are from only four liquid staking protocols. If Lido or Coinbase wants to suggest a change to Ethereum in some way, 
There's no doubt Ethereum will have to listen to those platforms and at least consider it. That's even if they don't do it in the end. Proof of stake made Ethereum much more highly concentrated and centralized, ultimately. Then there are some other protocols we like, for example, Cosmos or Cardano. Cosmos we love. Check out yesterday's video, by the way, if you haven't seen that. And their governance is super active. Maybe too active, it could be argued. Plus, the devs can make an unlimited supply and it's always inflationary. So that's out for investment pros, typically. By contrast with Cardano, nearly all users stake Cardano. Its Nakamoto coefficient is pretty good. This is a measure of decentralization of how many nodes could control at least one half of the network. For Ethereum, it's one, Lido. For Cardano, it's 50 as of December 2023, which is much better. In fact, of the big networks, it's second best to Polkadot, which sits at 92. Here's a full list of Nakamoto coefficients. Polkadot has actually gained one, so I misspoke. It's at 93. But honestly, Cardano, Cosmos, even Polkadot are just not big enough and don't trade enough volume for big institutions, especially ETF style big. All of them trade well under $1 billion daily. They range from $180 million to $580 million. ETF trading volume is in the multi-billion dollar range per day. These markets are just not big enough, they don't trade enough, and are not liquid enough to support this. That's even if you agree with all the philosophical and design principles of each network. Have you heard about the term authorized participant or AP, maybe in all this ETF talk? It's an important concept and it shows why big players want Bitcoin. And here are two reasons why being an AP is good. First, an AP can create or redeem shares of an ETF. They also get to maintain custody of the securities. And this is a big one because imagine even earning 10 basis points or one tenth of 1% 1 on an ETF with a large sum, $100 billion in assets under management. That would be $100 million with no market risk in that position either, just to hold and maintain custody. So it seems like a small amount, yes, percentage wise, but when dealing with these massive numbers, it's actually huge. And so now you can see why custody of a Bitcoin ETF is such a big deal. And there's also another big reason why you'd want to be an AP. If they were a market maker, then the institution would have to be able to broker trades as well as provide buy and sell sides of trades to help keep a market liquid. As an AP, you can trade actively for your own account as well as hold inventory of Bitcoin to wait to sell to others. For such a single asset ETF like Bitcoin, this is actually a much better deal than being a market maker. All right, so who is and who wants to be an authorized participant? Coinbase is already going to be one of the big winners upon approval. Most of the top ETF applications have Coinbase listed as their AP and custodian, including BlackRock, by the way. Fidelity is going to custody their own BTC. Uh, this makes their offering a little more true to Bitcoin's original mission, arguably. Now, Goldman Sachs also wants in. Grayscale and BlackRock are in talks with Goldman currently. In Grayscale's case, they are hoping to convert their GBTC into an ETF if approved to do so. And so big institutions finally see what we knew all along. Bitcoin is a great form of money and a great asset. And as dollars and other currencies around the world continue to inflate and devalue, Bitcoin only becomes more valuable and more appealing. And again, and as a reminder, and as you already know, but with only 21 million of them total, the Goldmans and the Black Rocks of the world, they want their own piece of it. So if you have some, and maybe you front ran them, congratulations. If you don't, you should probably get some because Bitcoin will only continue to get more and more scarce that's just the default already with the halving structure, but add to that now the fact that these major institutions are keen and are eager, and they're gonna be programming billions of dollars in daily purchases automatically. So the scarcity narrative that we've always pointed to in this space is about to get real. Altcoin Buzz Alpha is proud to say that we now have a winning portfolio spread among different sectors. And additionally, we're also very well positioned to get into good IDOs. 
And if you're into passive income and airdrops, just check out the number that we've received until now. Add to that the original TIA airdrop and all the others that are upcoming. We've achieved this by giving several deeply researched and diversified calls. Just check out some of these numbers from December 2023, last month. And right now, the plan moving forward is to reallocate profits to low caps, to diversify into new segments, to keep getting bigger and better airdrops, to catch the latest trends like Bitcoin and linear inscriptions, and to dollar cost average during market flushes. We just recently introduced a yearly subscription to Patreon, and you can take advantage of that because if you subscribe to that yearly plan for a limited time, you get one month's membership completely free. Check us out by clicking on the link in the description of this video and the pinned comment below.